Hey, Fred Minnick here, and I'm about to jump into my old soul and sip some Indiana bourbon produced in Mississippi. Ooh, we got a label situation. Giddy up! So, as you can see on the label here, uh, they talk about this uh, product being a blend and that it is distilled in Indiana. Yet, when you get a little closer down here, you'll see that it says that it is uh, produced and bottled by Cathead Distillery. By the way, great name for a distillery, Cathead. I, I, I love that name. And I actually, I really like this label. I think this is a cool label. You can see, uh, you can definitely, definitely feels like an old school bottle. But when we look at like, you know, transparency in labeling, technically, legally, nothing wrong with that one. Uh, it's just, you know, the produced and bottled by, and they have the distilled in there as well. It is, it to me, it's a little, you know, you got to be careful with that if you're a producer. If they don't put the, that it's distilled in Indiana in there, they're going to get in trouble. But, um, you know, the being produced in, uh, in Mississippi uh, when it was distilled in Indiana, you know, I would rather them see, see something like, you know, the bottled part. That's great. But I'd rather see something like, you know, aged uh, additional time in Mississippi. You know, the word produce, you know, can confuse people to think it might have been distilled. You know, that's a small little thing. And I'm probably one of only like 100 people, you know, that, that have that has that kind of issue uh, with these bottlings. But, you know, that's not to take any prejudice into the tasting. Just a little label thing that maybe hopefully, uh, you know, that can be improved in future uh, bottlings. But again, what a kick ass looking label. Am I right? I, I'm a big fan of fonts. <laughs> I just love the font for uh, this old soul here. So I, I'm going to have to find out what that font is. But okay, so here we go. I'm going to go through a four-point tasting in which I analyze the color. Uh, I analyze, um, you know, the, the smell, the aroma, analyze the taste, and I analyze the finish. And it's with that four-point tasting that I will kind of give you my opinion on uh, this straight bourbon whiskey that is a blend of straights. Uh, they have on the label that there is no color added. You can add coloring to a blend of straights. So I appreciate that uh, piece as well on the label. So, okay. Here we go. Now, this color is quite a bit lighter than I'm uh, accustomed to. Um for some of these things coming out of Indiana. One of the things that I have noticed about uh, Indiana bourbons is they tend to they tend to have just a, a, a slighter darker hue. And this one seems to be light. Now I will put uh, a little bit more description in of this particular release in the in the description. So look in the description for a link. Okay, so you can't really score on color. You can't really say, oh, it's lighter. It's not going to be any good. But it can give you a little bit of an idea of what you are about to taste. And the smell, whoo. That smells like, um, that smells like grits. And by the way, you know, I'm, I'm doing this right now live with my YouTube members and this is my first official tasting back after like a long break. So I'm actually really excited about this. Now I have tasted, but I haven't been all analytical like I'm about to. So old soul, you're about to be the first thing that I've tasted in, uh, in two and a half weeks. I've been on uh, palate rest, if you will. Okay, so it smells like grits, like a little bit of butter on grits, some pepper in there as well. But yeah, really corn grit forward. Here we go. That's good. Um, there's some banana in here. Uh, there's some cornbread. 
there's some like uh, rye toast, um, almost like a rye muffin. And I get um, after that, I get some some oak. Um, you know, it's got. This is one where the stocks that made this, it's almost like you can taste the brilliance that would be in like four or five years. Right now, it's like good. I think four or five years, uh, what whatever composed of the whatever composed this batch would be great. So, if the folks from Cathead are watching this, if you have any of these barrels that are related to this release. Hang on to them because I think you got something special here. This is a really good uh, taster. I'm probably wanting to taste this over something like, uh, um, you know, like you know some of the standard products that you would find on the shelf. Uh, so the SRP is uh, $44.95. Um, it's got some shipping partners, but it's available in Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, Mississippi, North Carolina. Ohio, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. They had 88, 88 barrels uh, composed of this. And I got to tell you, that that's, it, I hope they have, I hope they have more of those barrels because this is, you know, this is really, really good. And I think it could be great down the line. I will, um, I will say that, I'm buying this probably, I'm probably, this is in the league for me as Four Roses Single Barrel, uh, a Knob Creek, uh, an Old Forester 1920. It's, it's in that conversation of like things, I would put it in there in terms of like what I would put it in for, for like a buy. Um, I think, I think this is one. You know, 45 bucks is not going to break the bank, you know. I mean, it can be steep if you are on a, on a fixed income or a budget, but, you know, I think you take a flyer on this one. I recommend it as, a, as I'm letting it finish. There's this nice little subtle, like, orange chocolate note kind of coming to, coming to fruition. But there's a lot of good things going on with this old soul, and I hope they have some of those barrels left over for for a release down the road. But... Yeah, kudos to uh, Cathead for putting out a pretty darn good, uh, pretty go darn good uh, uh, blend of straights here. Pretty good. So definitely recommend this. I look forward to um, upcoming releases uh, with this one. Just and maybe you know the uh, the wording on the back label, just for my little you know weirdness can get fixed. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Hey, if you want to see more honest reviews, click that subscribe button. I got them coming in all the time. And if you would like to see this live like the YouTube members did, just click join and become a YouTube member. They saw this review long before anybody else. And uh, believe me, they were making fun of me all the way through it. But that's going to do it for this episode. Be safe out there, folks, and remember, no licking handrails, no licking trash cans, and vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers, everybody.